Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Ill Soy Advisor. Another episode towards the end of August. I have Drew Beckman, Karen Corrigan, and Craig Grafton with me here today. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the yield forecast that NAS released earlier this week, specifically for Illinois corn 225, soybean 66. So I'd say they're expecting somewhat of a record crop. And I'm curious to go around now and see what are you seeing in the fields? Do you see a record crop? Karen, we'll start with you. We have some disease setting in at the moment, so I think that's going to have some effect on it, um, particularly in the soybeans. There's a lot of SDS showing up um, from the wet uh, period that we had during germination, between germination and emergence. Um, so far, the cornfields I've been in have been very clean. I know Eastern Iowa is having some issues with tar spot coming in, and this is prime weather for that to flourish. So that's something that we need to really keep an eye on, particularly if people haven't um, sprayed their corn at um, R1 or so. But um, they're still, I mean, I don't, I don't, it doesn't feel like a record crop year. Um, generally, our record crops are when we're on a, the drier side, and I feel like we've had a much wetter year, so I guess we'll find out in a month or so. I think harvest is going to come fast, which is another thing that can drop the yield. Um, if the plants mature, it's one thing, but if they just die, then um, <laughs> the yield's not going to be there either. So, Do you think, Karen, and anyone can answer this as well, if we're seeing tar spot come in, is it worth <clears throat> is it worth the investment of another pass of fungicide given what's happening in the markets? Well, I think you have to look at your own situation. You know, how many leaves are affected? What do the temperatures look like? You know, use a tool like the tar spotter out of the University of Wisconsin that can help you kind of determine your probability of a higher infestation. Um, we have to remember too that tar spot generally happens in southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois. It's not always this far down, so you really need to take into account where you are um, in Illinois. I don't think it's an automatic. I think there's a lot of things that you need to think through, and um, definitely you have to look at you know what your budget is for the year and what you have invested in the crop. So. I know it's piece. hard sometimes for people to stop spending money, hmm. but sometimes that's the best thing they can do. Yeah, the one piece I would add is we had such a wide planting window. There may be some cornfields out there that do have a long way to go. Um, and so maybe those would be the ones I would think about first to to try to get them through the finish line, especially with some of this cooler weather slowing, slowing things down a little bit. Um, that might be another thought. But yeah, it's hard to stop spending money. Drew, any thoughts on fungicide pass? Um, I would agree with everything they said. I mean, the fields that I have been in that have had some tar spot beginning to develop are mostly starting to dent. So your the finish line is not that far away. And even um, at our field day yesterday, speaking with growers about this exact topic, a lot of them were feeling like in 21, where we had a lot of it, late infestation of tar spot, maybe they lost five to eight bushel. Um, which I know sounds like a lot, but when you look at the economics right now, is that going to pay for a fungicide application, a second fungicide application? I'll let you run that math on your own, but I know what my answer is. Drew, let's stick with you. Up north, are you seeing any reports of white mold? So just a very limited amount. Yes, I am. Um, mostly in corners, compacted areas, uh, fields that have had a history of white mold. Um, I, I was wondering if we would see development. We had a short window that was favorable for disease to develop. Um, and it does seem like it took advantage of that. Personally, I have seen it a little bit more in what the trend has kind of been, I would say, in our area the last two years, two to three years, is we do seem to be seeing it in later maturing varieties um, because we do need those flowers in the lower portion of the canopy for infestation to occur. And a lot of it seems like the two, you know, I would say two five to two nine three zero ones uh, varieties are normally kind of done flowering in that segment of the plant, um, whereas our three zero and later's our later varieties are still flowering through that. That's not going to be the case every time. That just seems like what's been happening or what I've noticed here the last few years. I have not seen any massive infestations of white mold. Just like I said, a few plants here or there, 
fields that have a history of them. Remember, um, square tinium stem rot or right mold is a the it's a hard fruiting structure. So once you have that uh, in the field, you will have it. You have the inoculum there for a very long time. Drew, you're just getting fresh off of Bechnology days. You work for Bex Hybrids. Any questions that farmers are asking you that you didn't see coming? Um, a, a lot of questions are actually around that second fungicide uh, pass. That was a a big, um, a big portion of it. Actually, my uh, entire speech that we did here in El Paso yesterday um, was all about all around that fungicide application window. And I would still say that you know even with commodity prices where they are, gr growers are still very optimistic. I mean, they're still wanting to optimize yield. They're still um, willing to make those investments. Uh, that was, and I don't want to say that was surprising, but I thought that there would maybe be a little bit more of a darker sentiment, if you will. And I'm still not seeing that um, quite yet. So I think that was probably the biggest surprise. A lot of questions around this record yield piece. And I'm going to be very similar to Karen here. I, I uh, just am not really seeing a record crop out there. Um, especially in the corn, we're, we are seeing that maybe we had some stress around that V5 to V7. Um, our rows around counts, and this is no matter the brand, I'm not picking on any brands here, um, it, it are not that fantastic, right? A lot of 16s, we're not seeing 18s and 20s like I think people are maybe planning on. Now, that can change a lot as we move through grain fill here. We're, we're having a very nice grain fill period. It's cool. It's going to be elongated. We have moisture. Um, there's a lot of good things happening, but we can only make up for so much. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that moves along. I don't can't say that I have an answer for that. Um, a, a weird thing that I'm seeing, and, and maybe Karen and Craig can kind of back uh, reinforce this, or, or but it's, I'm almost seeing what looks like bird feeding on a lot of on like whole fields. And I'm also finding northern corn rootworm beetles in that mm. ear feeding on the on the kernels. And I mean, I'm finding, and, and it's very consistent throughout these fields. Mm. And now I found it in more than one now. Um, and it's, I, I've never seen anything like it before. Is that more mostly north of I-80? What's the location? Uh, it's actually in the Peoria area oh, okay. um, that I've seen it right now. Um, but I, I kind of had shrugged it off of the one-off, but I actually was walking my own field here yesterday um, after we got back from El Paso, and I found a little bit of it there as well. Um, but it almost looks like northern corn rootworm beetles are feeding kind of on that, on that ear itself. Uh, just very, very odd. Never seen anything like it before. I can't say I've seen that either. I did see some grasshoppers yesterday. Yeah, I guess oh, I've seen those too. But Craig, yeah, are you? Oh, I, I was going to say, uh, I was going to ask Craig, but this is for anyone. I know when we talked a couple of weeks ago, stink bugs were still somewhat of a nuisance. Are we seeing those or have that have the stink bugs gone away? I did, I did see some yesterday. I didn't see a ton. So I would say they're still there. I think it was a nymph, but uh, they're, yeah, they're still there. I don't know that they're quite as prevalent as they, they were, but I, I don't know what you guys are seeing, Karen or Drew, but. I've seen a few, nothing major. It, yeah. Craig, what else are you seeing out in the fields? Um, so I guess yesterday I took a loop, um, went west over towards Springfield and SDS, like Karen mentioned. Um, is starting to pop up pretty heavily in my planning date trial that I've highlighted before in a blog and, and such. Um, you can see drastic differences between our first planning date, which was mid-April, and um, I think we had a pretty big delay, honestly, in the between the set first and the second date, but the second date doesn't show any. You, you have to hunt to see any kind of uh, SDS starting to show. Um, so... Uh, it, it just shows that some of that earlier planning stuff is is going to show, you know, be more prone to uh, getting some SDS or other diseases come in. Um, so so there was that and then tar spot. So tar spot I was in B mint two days ago and I found it, but I had to hunt pretty hard, which is east of Decatur. Um, and then yesterday I was in Stonington and then over by Pleasant Plains and I could find it as soon as I, you know, basically rolled down the window. So. It seems like um, Decatur and West, it's a little bit more advanced than east of there. My dad's been scouting. He hasn't found it yet, so he's in Edgar County. So 
kind of adds up. Um, I also heard it's in it's bad in southern Illinois, so too down around Evansville. So that's something they haven't had to deal with before. So, hmm. um, they have gotten so, yeah. a lot of rain down there. That's for sure this year. So yeah, and and this cool wet weather is it, it can go fast. I I've seen fields not in Illinois, but in Iowa a couple of years ago, it was just black. So it can go fast. And that's probably why guys are asking about a second application mm -hmm. because it can turn things very fast. Mm -hmm. So continue yeah, I mean, to the, the, go ahead. Okay, the, the worst uh, infestation of it I've actually seen so far was in uh, the small corner of Missouri that I actually cover that very Northern uh, little tip of it. And that's actually where I've seen the most advanced of it. So that was kind of surprising. They like, like you said, Craig, they're not, it's kind of new to them a little bit. They've had mm -hmm. it, but not, not kind of setting in like this. And I will say with the SDS showing up in soybeans, we're also looking for a red crown rot. Um, and yeah. some of those symptoms can look like SDS. So really get down there, look for those um, fruiting bodies and that red color. Um, if you go to ilsoidvisor.com and if you think you have red crown rot, um, we can get you to submit some samples for free because they're really trying to figure out where is red crown rot. They have it in Western Illinois, some spots in Central Illinois. So get out, look at your fields. I need to take my own advice and go do that because I haven't been out to our fields in a while. So something definitely to keep a look for. Um, we've talked about the wide variety of planting dates today. Any problems you're seeing in the later planted corn or soybeans or is mostly early planted. I think we want to make sure we urge farmers, since we had such a wide variety of planting dates this year, that they keep a close eye on that and um, look at those fields. Any thoughts? I was just going to say, I'll kind of eat my words when you asked us earlier this year about record yields. And I said <laughs> no, because we had such a wide planting window that you know, obviously weather won't align for all of it to to be great, but I think we've had a pretty wet, you know, a nice wet July. And I think in the general sense, most everything looks pretty good. I think there's still some holes out there that are going to hurt. Uh, you know, I, I was in one yesterday where we had some water and you could see nitrogen was a going to be a problem. And I think those are still out there, but uh, I think it was better than I thought it was going to be as far as the weather goes for all this wide window of things. Um, so that's a good thing, um, but we'll see how it finishes out because I think it's important. To, we still have to get to the finish line here. I do want to talk about harvest, but I think I'll save that for next week um, as we get closer to that September mid-September line. Anything else that you guys want to bring up today? Any questions that you're getting? Um, anything that should be on our radar? Uh, the only question I've gotten is a second pass and, you know, what, what options are there for fungicides? Some of the cheaper ones, would they work on tar spot and those sorts of things? I would just say, you know, read the label and see, look at your actives and see what, see what, what's in there and make sure it would work for you. Um, you know, SDS, I don't know that there's a whole lot you can do at this point on that one. That's, well, most of the soybean diseases at this point. Um, but the other thing would be to look at what you did and, and what changes you might want to think about making for next year. Um, you know, it's that, that seed ordering time and those plans are probably already starting to pop up as far as conversations go. So um, that would be the only thing I can think of right now. Karen? Um, I would say it's a great time to evaluate your weed control, especially if you had any fields that got out of hand. Um, obviously, if you're looking at putting in cover crops, those are things that you need to have in place and get ready to do because um, that will come quick. Um, I did want to mention that we have had some brown stem rot too, which can be also in the mix with SDS and red crown rot. So definitely split your soybean stems to make sure that the pith is not brown. Um, when determining what disease you might have. I did do that. It was a nice white pith and I did not see any red fruiting bodies. So I was assuming it was SDS. Yeah, and I there is a lot out there. I just had one grower um, near Bloomington who did have brown stem rot. 
but great reminders because there's a I, I think there's four or five things that can look like SDS that symptomology so mm -hmm. it may not be what you think yeah sorry I have my junior agronomist with me um, but I would agree that uh, with everything that Karen said, the other side of it I would mention is we have set a large amount of samples in the U of I, um, especially from my Peoria to Iowa part of my territory, the southern part. And we, um, just to verify that we're not seeing like brown hay, hey, no, sorry. <laughs> Um, but, uh, we are, we have not found any red crown rot yet throughout our territory and every sample that we have sent in. So just something that I almost feel like we are on a little bit of a witch hunt, um, for that. But, uh, you know, just to say that we are mostly still seeing the brown stem rot, the sudden death, things like that. Um, and we really need to be careful to maybe pin the tail on the donkey of it saying, yes, that is red crown rot. Oh, look at, you know, that's, that's what it has to be. No, we're still seeing a lot of these traditional diseases, but we are trying to track like, like uh, Kelsey said, we're trying to track where it is and maybe where it isn't. Yep. When in doubt, send in a sample. Karen, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I just think it's a good idea to see what diseases you have out there because your best prevention against disease is going to be your seed that you choose, your varieties and your hybrids. So uh, Craig was talking about ordering seed soon. That's something that you need to make sure you take into account because that's your first best de defense. Definitely. And and a lot of these things that we're talking about are actually controlled by seed treatments, too. That's the other thing to remember. So I'm not going to put a plug in for any particular brands of it, but just keep, keep that in mind. Yeah, I think we alluded to this earlier this year that um, write things down. I know that seems so simple and like it's kind of like a dumb moment, but I'm reminded of how we're all sometimes we have a short uh, memory. So I think it's good to keep those notes. We'll be ordering seeds soon. I didn't want to pass over a cover crop plan too, but maybe that's something we can cover next week since we're winding down here. That's on the horizon. So um, you just keep going to the next thing and make sure you stop and see, okay, what's happening now? And now how can I prepare for the next season? That's just as important because there's some things, like you said, can't do anymore, but you can definitely plan for 2025. So... Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think we'll end this here. Thank you all so much for joining us on Ill Soy Advisor today. We'll be back next week and um, we'll see what happens with these disease reports. And we'll talk about some harvest prep, I think, next week. So thank you all for joining us.